Welcome to the 2023 Festival of Learning Awards. Uh, my name is Stephen Evans. I'm the Chief Executive of the Learning and Work Institute. Um, today, we're going to be revealing our 10 award winners as well as seven outstanding finalists. Um, and I'm really pleased that we're holding this event here at City Lit. Uh, which is a truly outstanding college. Um, that's not just my words, that's the words this week of uh, Ofsted. Um, so it's very timely. There we go. Um, so congratulations to them. We actually held an event here on the day that uh, inspection was announced. So it's very kind of Ofsted to wait until we're back here again <laughs> to announce the, the results of it as well. Um, now, uh, last year, we held the 2022 awards in this very room as well, and I was just reflecting back on what's happened over that year. So, a year ago, on this very day, um, someone called Boris Johnson was Prime Minister. I don't know if anyone remembers back to those days. And um, By the end of the awards ceremony day, um, the Chancellor, someone called Rishi Sunak, um, had resigned... Uh, two days after that, 57 ministers had resigned, which is a, a record, um, and the Conservative Party went on to select Liz Truss as the Prime Minister for what was, if we're honest, quite a weird six weeks. Um, I feel like we've, we've, we've sort of pretended that didn't happen, but it, it did. So, so I, I'm not putting all of that down to holding the Festival of Learning Awards here. Um, and I'm not promising you that today as well, though I'd be grateful if you could keep an eye on your phones and just let me know if there's anything I need to know. Um, but what I can promise you is a really fantastic celebration of uh, lifelong learning and some amazing uh, award winners and finalists as well. And, and I'm really pleased that we're going to start proceedings today uh, with a special video message from the Skills Minister, Rob Halfen, who's a real true champion of lifelong learning and social justice. So we're really grateful to him for sending us through this message. I'm sorry I can't be here in person today to be part of this celebration. I know the Festival of Learning is a really important week in the learning calendar. And I know this event has been running for 30 years, which is a testament to its importance to adult learning. As many of you are aware, I'm a true advocate of adult learning. It's a real passion of mine. That is because I know what adult learning can achieve. Many adults may have missed out or not achieved when they were younger for many reasons, or their careers may have stalled, or they just need to get new skills. And that is what adult learning can do help people to achieve their goals and get them climbing again on the ladder of opportunity. So whatever your circumstances or your background or where you're from, adult learning is for you. Whilst I know that it's vitally important to equip young people with the education and skills that they and employers and the country need, it's also vitally important that adults get those opportunities too. And that's why I'm honoured and delighted to be Minister for Skills at a fantastic time for adult learning in a government that recognises fully the need to provide opportunities for adults and is doing so through a range of policies to suit different needs. Policies that aim at adults to boost their education, to develop their skills, to improve their lives and to get them on that ladder of opportunity. That's something else I'm passionate about, the ladder of opportunity. It's a framework to support everyone, but especially those from disadvantaged backgrounds, to gain valuable skills and qualifications to enter into good employment. I see adult learning within that framework as having five pillars. First is community learning and tailored learning, which we know brings benefits to many adults, boosting their confidence and reigniting a passion in learning. It plays a vital role in helping adults of all ages and backgrounds to gain skills, confidence and motivation. It also provides a way of progressing to further learning, training or employment and is an important stepping stone. Second is careers advice. 
which we know is essential to help adults identify and seize the opportunities they need through the, through the National Career Service, adults can get advice online or in person through career advisors who are trained to work with adults and a skill identifying their potential motivating them to succeed. They help people to build a career and a skills action plan for their short, medium and long term goals. Third is adult learning for jobs through programmes such as free courses for jobs which fully funds level 3 provision for eligible adults giving them access to high value qualifications. Courses are available in over 400 subject areas such as construction and health and social care. And skills boot camps which offer free flexible courses of up to 16 weeks. These give people the opportunity to build up sector specific skills and fast track to an interview with a local employer. These two new programmes are providing fantastic new opportunities for adults alongside existing provision such as apprenticeships and provision funded through adult, the adult education budget. Fourth is the lifelong learning entitlement, something about which I'm very excited. From 2025, we will make available financial support equivalent to four years post-18 education, £37,000 in today's fees, for individuals to use over their working lives. It will enable access in a way that has not been possible before. Learning and paying by module will present new opportunities for those unable to commit to a long course so they can learn and build qualifications at their own pace. And finally, through skills devolution, we're giving local leaders responsibility for the provision of adult education through the adult education budget so that it meets better local needs. 60% of the budget has already been devolved to nine mayoral combined authorities and the Mayor of London. And we're committed to devolving further from 2025-26. These authorities are responsible for the provision of uh, AEB funded adult education for their residents and the allocation of the adult education budget to providers. It is therefore such a pleasure to be sending my message to you all at this event where there are so many people leading the way in adult learning be that in promoting and delivering it or those who are undertaking it because they know it will bring benefits and that is why we need to instill a love of learning in individuals in families and communities and by love of learning, I mean lifelong learning. Because there are so many benefits. The obvious one is improving career prospects, but there are also health and well-being benefits and boosting confidence. And also the confidence to support their children to learn when they have been learning themselves. And not only does adult learning benefit individuals, but it also benefits communities, employers, business and the country. Because having people with the right skills employers need to be competitive and grow benefits us all. So I'd like to congratulate the 10 award winners and 7 nominees for their achievements. In fact, I want to congratulate all those here that have embarked on learning. You are all winners because you will all reap the benefits of your adult learning. I'm sure that your hard work, commitment and dedication will pay dividends. I wish you every success, whatever you do next. Finally, I would like to thank the Learning and Work Institute for once again organising this festival and recognising these remarkable achievements. So a really big, a really big thank you to uh, the minister for that message um, of support and of congratulations to everybody um, here today. 
Um, I'd also like to thank all of our sponsors, uh, in particular NOCN, uh, City Lit, the Skills and Education Group, uh, and the Education uh, Training Foundation. Without the help um, of all of those uh, sponsors um, and all wider supporters, including uh, Phoenix Insights, uh, we wouldn't be able to put on awards like this or run the Festival of Learning more broadly. So a huge thank you to all of those organisations and everyone who works across um, adult education. Um, also, um, I wanted to uh, say that, uh, as well as everybody in this room here today, we've also got uh, lots of you watching uh, the live stream via YouTube as well, so hello to all of you. And um, if any of you in this room or beyond are on social media, please do tweet away using, you've got two, two hashtags today, um, FOL Awards and Festival of Learning 2023, which those of you in the room can see on the screen behind me, and those of you watching the live stream should hopefully, via the magic of technology, see some of those messages popping up during the course of the awards. Um, so please do tweet away. Um, one last point from me before I think um, it's time to get on with the business of the day and give out some awards. Um, and that's to say that I'm really pleased that the Minister mentioned the wide range of benefits to adult education. And I think our winners and nominees today um, epitomise lots of those uh, benefits. So, yeah, it's about finding a job or getting on at work, but actually it's so much more than that. It's about improving health and well-being, playing an active role in society, just for fun, just for interest in the subject. So there's lots of reasons why people take part in learning and lots of benefits um, to them. And I think the phrase, um, whenever I speak to winners, be interesting to see if the same is true today, the phrase I perhaps most often hear is that learning was about a door being opened. Um, and that's what it's about, is about doors of opportunity throughout your life. Um, and that's why everybody in this room does what you do. So I thank you for it. Um, I think that's probably enough rabbiting on from me. And everybody in this room is not here to listen to me, but here to receive and listen to and give out some awards. So shall we crack on with that? I'm going to take that as affirmation. Um, this is the soporific post-lunch uh, lull. Um, so let's, let's get on to our first award. And this is our Patrons Award. We're really delighted that um, our patron, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal, selects uh, an award winner personally herself um, each year. Now, sadly, um, Her Royal Highness can't be with us this afternoon, but we've got two more than able stand-ins uh, for her. Uh, and so I'm really pleased um, to announce our Patrons Award winner uh, to welcome to the stage the Learning and Work Institute Chair, Jeremy Moore, and last year's Patrons Award winner, Misha Coleman-Jones. Thank you, Stephen. Um, our winner uh, can already uh, look back on a long life and on a lifelong passion for art. But until recently, she'd not yet realised her ambition of putting on an art show of her own. That was about to change when she was referred to the Digital Project. Her passion for art contrasted with her vague understanding of IT. There seemed to be a gulf between the two. IT was mechanical, a world away from the creativity of art. She realised that her ambition of putting on an art show would involve event promotion, picture digitalisation, and lots of emails. The thought crossed her mind that she should get someone else to do it. But it was her art, her show, and she decided she was going to do it herself. So she joined the Digital Project at Open Age and enrolled in their one-to-one -one programme in Westminster. There she learnt about things that she'd never heard of before, including something called Instagram and Eventbrite. Her network of dedicated tutors and coordinators gave her an increased sense of security. She felt she was no longer uh, alone with a dreaded computer. Her determination to achieve this personal goal led her to organise the whole event, complete with an online landing page and accompanying social media presence. It was a huge success. Acquiring IT literacy has given her a renewed self-belief and self-confidence. IT is not an intimidating monster. With the right support, it is incredibly liberating. And post-art show, the learning will go on. 
Vishak. I feel really honoured to be reading um, Her Royal Highness's statement, not because of who wrote the statement, but for who the statement is for. The statement reads, As patron of Learning and Work Institute, I am pleased to congratulate everyone who was nominated for a Festival of Learning Award this year. I understand the importance of celebrating the impressive journeys the award winners and finalists have undertaken to achieve their goals. I would also like to thank them for sharing personal stories and experiences of their lifelong learning. These inspiring stories show the breadth of people's motivations to continue to learn, to support children's development, to get that first job or promotion, for health and well-being, and of course, to contribute to the community. This year's Patrons Award winner for the Festival of Learning is Margaret Porter. Margaret's current learning journey began through a conversation with an open age staff member about how she had never put on an art show of her own. Margaret successfully organised an art show with an online event landing page and accompanying social media presence, all created through her learning at open age. Her story of passion reflects the very ethos of Festival of Learning. It also demonstrates how an individual's learning journey can also benefit communities and society. Lifelong learning is exactly that, lifelong. I am convinced that it is never too late to start. Margaret's incredible story, I hope, will help to inspire the next cohort of adult learners. Congratulations again. So I'm delighted to announce this year's Patrons Award winner, Margaret Porter. Hello. Hello again, Margaret. Um, many congratulations. Um, so what's the next step for you now on your, on your learning journey? Undoubtedly more of the same, non-stop. Well, long may it continue. Congratulations again. Misha, would you like to do the honours? Yeah. I'm <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to Margaret, and don't worry, she will be coming back. We're just doing some more photos. It's not like get your award and get out. Don't, don't worry. Um, so huge congratulations to uh, Margaret. Um, now we're going to move on to two awards together here, um, and uh, really delighted to introduce Graham Hastings Evans to give out the Learning for Work and Employer Awards. Graham's the the Chief Executive of NOCN, and uh, NOCN are sponsors of those two awards and long-standing friends and supporters of the Festival of Learning and the Learning and Work Institute. So we're very grateful for his support. So please welcome Graham. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity to come and present the two awards. Uh, I know most of you will know NOCN is an awarding body and a credentialing in an organisation, we issue smart cards and all of those sorts of things. But what we are trying to do is to help people with lifelong learning get the skills that they need, get into employment and develop their careers, overcoming the n numerous barriers that are in front of, unfortunately, some of, some of the people that live in our country. 
So that's a commitment. That's what our charity is all about, is helping people do that. And what we want is for a learner to overcome those barriers, gain the sort of confidence and skills that they need uh, to work and live a good life within our community. And on the other side of that, for the employer to feel confident that the person can do the job and want to employ them. And that's why, for us, we want to sponsor both the awards. For one, the employer's award, obviously, for the employer, and the learning for work for a learner. They're both complementary. They're both two sides of the same coin for lifelong learning. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to start with the employer award. Uh, and I'm delighted to announce that the winner is Nuneaton Signs, and we're just going to see a short film that tells you about Nuneaton Signs. Nuneaton Signs are a social enterprise. We see a lot of work with construction companies and local authorities and things, as well as road signs. And that has given us the opportunity to provide employment for more people. We have 73 members of staff and 71% of which have at least one disability or mental health condition. What's really important to us is making sure that nobody is made to feel like they're different. The supported internship programme that we do with North Warwickshire South Leicestershire College has been like a ray of sunshine for everybody here at Nuneaton Signs. I've done all of the workplaces, going from the factory to inside the offices, and it's basically helped me understand what it's like to work, but also give me daily life skills along the way. It's made me advance as a human being, and instead of being that quiet, shy person that I used to be, I'm now confident, I'm able to talk to people, socialise properly, as well as actually work now, which I never thought I'd be able to do. It's our second year of having interns here with us. And they come in during term time and work closely with all of their various different mentors throughout the business. A lot of our mentors are geared up to be working with people with learning difficulties anyway because it's who we are as a business. The people who we have as mentors within our structure have the skills to work with people with learning disabilities. They know that they need to take their time and allow people to work at their own pace but also support them in certain areas so that they can thrive as an individual. What we are seeing at the college, and this is replicated elsewhere, is it's enabling a very, very diverse group of young people who may previously have not had access to learning, to learn, to have their lives changed, and to discover things about themselves which probably most of them never dreamt was possible. It's not just the technical skills that they're learning here. For me, the more important thing actually is learning those generic skills for work. So communication skills, problem solving skills, team working skills, those skills that they could transfer actually in the long term to any other employment. I'd like to call Nuneaton Signs to the stage, please. Yeah, okay, thanks very much. Yeah, no, got it. Hello. Uh, I'm just testing. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, good. Thanks, Thank you. Um, how important is the investment in learning and development to the success of your organisation business? It's evident to us. Um, the future of the business isn't the old fogies like me, it's the young people, you know, and we have these fantastic young people come in that light up our everyday, and we have the chance, we take the time, to pass on the skills that we've learned to them so the, the business has a future. I'm not the future, the young people are. 
Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martin. Okay, um, the second award that I'm delighted to, uh, to give out today is the Learning for Work Award, and I'd like to announce the winner is Jeff Carter. Unfortunately, Jeff cannot be with us today, so Jamie Hall uh, is going to take the award on his behalf. So I'd like Jamie to come to the front, please. Everyone falls on their hard times. That the misfortune of sort of losing his wife a few years back, the balance of being a single dad and keeping the family afloat. Someone like that with the fact that they show up every day, the fact that they've got the willingness to learn and so on and so forth, that's the kind of people we want to upskill. I went on the Dole for 12 months, kept pushing my work coach to uh, find me a valid course with a good qualification. It was horrible, awful, awful time. And then she found me the course with RMF, and uh, luckily I haven't looked back since, which is almost four years ago. He's level one health and safety. It's the SES card which enables you to get onto sites. We then put him through further training, which was sites access, which was collaborated for HS2 only. With that job, he gave him sustainable work for many years on one of the major projects in Birmingham. We've upskilled him in different areas, not necessarily he's used them all, but it's enabled him to have that scope where we can offer him alternative opportunities, whatever it might be. Adult learning can be a scary concept, but we've eased people into it and it's just given them the opportunity to build on their CV, to build on their experiences and to build on themselves as a person and to make career changes. We're just striving towards getting people into work, giving them the right training and giving them that opportunity to achieve. If you meet them negative people, let that inspire you. No, man, that ain't pulling me off. Go for it. And if that door gets slammed, then knock that one and just keep going. But you've got to take the first step. You've got to be brave and you've got to believe in yourself and you've got to want to do it. If you want to do it, you can do it. Nick loved the poem, that's my wife, and she loved the last couple of lines. It was, when you're artistic, that you must never quit. about your words and if you say you're going to do something then mean it and don't let nothing sway you. Now please can you tell us what difference learning has made to Jeff including at work and his wider life? I've been told uh, for the purposes today to uh, channel my inner Jeff, which is going to be very difficult to do, as you've just seen how remarkable that man is. Um, I did speak to Jeff yesterday. He does send his sincerest apologies for not being here, but does extend his thanks and gratitude to the Learning Work Institute. Um, he is very, very flattered and very, very honoured. Um, to answer your question and to channel my inner Jeff, I did attempt to walk a mile in Jeff's shoes, and this is what I discovered. Um, Jeff 
experienced immense adversity that I don't believe most of the working population will ever experience, at least until retirement. Um, it stretches far beyond the quest for personal and professional qualifications. Learning for Jeff acted as a catalyst for growth, uh, for progression, for self-sufficiency, and the ability to act as a role model um, for his family. I'm incredibly proud to say that after Jeff came through our courses, that his daughter did too. She completed a level one horse care course with RMF, and Jeff still works for the company. I think Jeff needs to serve as a reminder that with proper education and the support that we can create brighter futures for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Fabulous. Um, thank you to Graham for NOCN support for those awards, but also more generally the amazing work that NOCN does to widen opportunity for so many people um, through learning and skills. And two brilliant award winners, I'm sure you can agree there. Um, and I think we've, we've talked a little bit, or we've seen a little bit about um, the work side of learning in those last two awards. We're going to talk now a little bit about the health side of learning and the, and the health benefits of lifelong learning. Um, and there's no better day to do it, really, than the 75th birthday of the National Health Service and the modern social security system. So it's very timely. Uh, not pre-planned, I'm going to be honest, but I'm going to take the, uh, take, take the link anyway. Um, and to introduce uh, this award, we have uh, Catherine Foote, who's the director of Phoenix Insights, which is a, a new longevity think tank looking at how we work, learn, save and live given longer working lives and longer lives uh, in general. And we're really uh, delighted to have Phoenix Insight support for the Festival of Learning, but also to be working with them more broadly on a programme of work looking at all those um, issues. So please welcome Catherine to the stage. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Stephen. My goodness, I'm delighted that Phoenix can support um, these awards. I'm thinking, though, that maybe next year I might ask that some of our money goes towards maybe like a little packet of tissues on every seat, something like that. Goodness me, the stories today are um, incredible, aren't they? And, and this next one um, is absolutely no exception. Um, it's an absolute um, privilege to be here at, at City Lit, too. I'm a former... Um, City Lit learner after a, a short summer taster course. I spent four years of very, very happy Tuesdays here um, studying Chinese. My mum is a current um, City Lit uh, learner uh, every Friday when she's not helping me look after my kids. And what a palace to lifelong learning this building is. So it's wonderful, wonderful to be here. And it's my absolute privilege to be able to tell you the story rather than a, a video today, for me to have the opportunity to tell you the story of the award winner for the Learning for Health Award, Jackie Butterworth. So, Jackie was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 2013, and she had surgery to have a stoma formed the following year. She struggled with her self-image for many years, and found it difficult to adapt to life with her stoma. Her husband left, and she and her son were told that they had to leave their home. She started to suffer badly from anxiety to the point that she stopped going out. It was Jackie's local stoma nurse who helped turn things round for her by sitting with her and listening to her talk. Jackie bravely joined a group called Friendship Friday, run by the w WEA at a Community House in Selby, and a trauma group with the fantastic name Be Vocal. This provided a really safe environment for Jackie where she could begin to talk to, to Be Vocal, to work through her traumas and to create art. At the end of the course, they showcased their work in a gallery Jackie's was about 
her journey and her health and her main peace was with her stoma. Attending these support groups and courses with the WEA and others helped rebuild Jackie's confidence and create a sense of control over her life. She's getting stronger all the time, attending more courses, seeing a therapist every week and, and volunteering for things. More than that, she's used this learning to set up her own group, Second Chance Ostomy. It's been a huge step and really taken her out of her comfort zone. But I suppose what it shows to me is that Jackie's learning experiences haven't just transformed her own life and helped her to turn that life around. They're now helping through her work and her commitment to help others too. So please, can I ask you all to welcome our Festival of Learning, Learning for Health Award winner, the brilliant Jackie Butterworth to the stage. <laughs> Can you tell us what your learning journey has maybe revealed to you about yourself, taught you about yourself? It's taught me that I'm, I'm worthy, I'm worthy to be part of the community, that I'm important, that I don't need to hide away. And it's also given me the confidence to, to support others that were left alone and not supported like I was when I first had my surgery. And just to be able to learn new things every day um, about myself. And it's also made me a more confident mum to my 16-year-old. That's fantastic, Jackie. Congratulations again. Thank you, Catherine, and congratulations to uh, Jackie. I think uh, Jackie's a great example of where lifelong learning can help you directly, but also so many lifelong learners go on to help other people, and Jackie's a brilliant um, uh, example of that. Um, so our next award um, is the Tutor Award, and we're really delighted that this is sponsored by the Education and Training Foundation, and so really delighted that to present this award, we have the Chief Executive of the Education and Training Foundation, Katerina Kaliva. Thank you, Stephen. I'm delighted to be here uh, to present this award, and not only because it's uh, at such an important moment in terms of lifelong learning, but particularly as a fellow linguist, I have a passion for inclusion and for what languages do in terms of entering a new culture, a new world, every time we learn a new language. At the Education and Training Foundation, like everyone here, we are passionate about lifelong learning and the impact that we make to learners, to the wider communities we serve, and to colleagues. And we do that at ETF by supporting high quality professional development and workforce development. So I'm gonna now show you a little story about our tutor award, and uh, I'm, I'm delighted to say that the winner is Emma Eilif. Emma stands out because she's very passionate about BSL. She started her teaching career in a school, which is a very different experience as it's working with children. Here at City Lit, we work with adults, which is a very different method of teaching and that the learners learn in a different way. 
So I teach level three here at City Lit and also level four and level six. And I always like to encourage my students to develop and improve their confidence and to support each other and get involved in the deaf community to really develop their own skills. It's really important that not only they learn the language, that they learn the linguistics, that they integrate within the deaf community. Emma created a very supportive environment at City Lit. Immediately she went into the classroom, we were all sat in a circle and the communication with sign language is immediately evident, visual, and we were in that idea, you know, in a group. There was a feeling of inclusivity that Emma created. <laughs> I decided to set up the Facebook group BSL News. I regularly would film myself or other people would film themselves and we'd explain what was going on in the news and we'd upload them. It's given opportunities to deaf people to access information and ask questions, further questions about what's going on. I've also become involved in teaching in a wider context because of ABSLATA, the Association for Sign Language Teachers and Assessors. Uh, we work together as a network to ensure that the quality of sign language that's being taught across the UK is of such a good standard. I really enjoy being able to go into a classroom and see them develop and really use those skills. They learn language, they develop and they achieve and I think that whole experience for me is wonderful. What an inspiration, and can I invite us all uh, to welcome Emma. Um, hello, Emma. Congratulations. Thank you so much for everything you do. As a tutor, what gives you the most joy when seeing the individuals you teach develop their own use of British Sign Language? And can I just say, you inspire me so much, I want to learn it too. Well, thank you. That's very kind. I'm very honoured. I love teaching people. I love to see how their lives change their attitudes change towards deaf people as they become aware of the deaf community. Many of them begin to work in the deaf community. So that involvement and the career change, research into BSL linguistics and understanding of the deaf language, and then working with deaf professionals. For example, in the theater, I've seen my students come onto many roles, including as interpreters. I'd also like to see deaf students improve on their use of BSL and become BSL teachers like me. They're inspired by deaf history and deaf culture. The life story of deaf people can be really inspiring for others who've not had those role models. Fantastic.
Well, congratulations to um, Emma. And um, if Katerina or anybody else is looking for somewhere to learn British Sign Language, you probably can't find a much better place than, um, than City Lit. I'm, I'm not on commission. Um, although, Mark, should we, should we talk after? Um, but this is, this is a great place to learn that, as, as so much else, of course, as well. Um, so congratulations to um, Emma. Um, now, unbelievably, that means we are now halfway through um, our awards. Um, and one of the things that's really difficult about Festival of Learning is we get so many hundreds of amazing nominations um, every year, and it can be really, really difficult for our um, selection panel to try and narrow that down um, to, to the winners. And this year, uh, the, the selection panel have identified seven finalists who they thought were particularly um, outstanding. So we want to celebrate them uh, today. So if I can ask them, as I call out your name, if you could try and uh, come down to the, the stage, uh, please. So firstly, we have um, Isabella Inahosa, um, who, uh, as life was turned upside down by um, a brain injury, but um, adult learning courses at Idea Store Learning gave a chance to um, rebuild um, her life, and she now helps other people as well. Isabel, I can't see anybody, to be honest. Uh, it's very bright. Uh, there you are. Thank you. Please come on down. And you're allowed to applaud. <laughs> Um, so secondly, uh, we've got Fazend Callow, who um, escaped war and uh, travelled across uh, Europe and has done brilliantly with his GCSE English with Birmingham Adult Education Service and gone on to receive an MA in English Literature and is now, I think, about to start a PhD as well. So please uh, come on down, Fazend. <laughs> Right, I'm getting my steps in today. Um, so thirdly, we've got uh, June Martin, who's uh, suffered uh, a stroke and all the isolation that we all experienced through those uh, coronavirus uh, lockdowns, but um, has found a new set of paths uh, through learning with open age. And uh, she's done a range of courses from digital skills to singing, cooking and gardening. So June, please come on down. <laughs> Um, and next, uh, our next finalist is Razia Fez, who uh, um, started her journey at Redbridge Institute of Adult Education on an ESOL Entry 3 course. And that's inspired her onto lots of other learning and lots of other changes in her life, and also to, um, to inspire other adult learners as well. So, Razia, congratulations to you. <laughs> Right, 
Right, we've got a five-a-side football team, so we do two to go. Um, so next is the uh, Digital Project, um, which you've heard a bit, a little bit about. Um, so a partnership of third sector organisations to tackle digital exclusion in Northwest London, delivering uh, lots of one-to-one -one sessions and group sessions as well, and trying to outreach to people as well who are unable to leave their home. So congratulations to the Digital Project. Right, and our next finalist is Rebecca Blockley, who enrolled on a Chartered Manager degree apprenticeship while working as a prison officer, and as part of that apprenticeship, um, has involved the local assistance dog training charity into the prison, helping to improve, improve uh, prisoners' well-being. So congratulations to Rebecca. And last but by no means least is the Royal Logistic Corps, which trains and develops its young uh, workforce for a career in army logistics, as well as the personal and vocational skills and industry experience people need when they eventually transition to civilian life as well. So congratulations to the Royal Logistic Corps. A huge well done to all of our finalists and uh, well done also to our photographer for managing to get everyone in one shot there as well. Uh, it's good work. Um, right, so we've got five awards to go. And uh, next up is our Return to Learning Award. And we've heard so many um, stories so far about the ways that adult learning can change people's lives. This is about how people first get back in to learning. And we're really grateful, as I said earlier, for the support of City Lit for today, uh, but also for the Festival of Learning more broadly. And so I'm delighted to welcome City Lit's principal, Mark Malcolmson, to present this award. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Um, it's, it's such a pleasure to be able to have you in our house, our palace. Um, I'm going to use that a lot going forward. Um, City Lit is, is an organisation that is committed to supporting people in learning throughout their lives. And you saw earlier um, Emma. Uh, yeah, we have a 1,000 part-time tutors, all of whom are, are amazing in many ways. But I have to say that... Um, as, as not only an amazing teacher, Emma is probably one of the most lovely human beings I've ever met in my life. Um, she is just a joy to have in the office. She just sits across the aisle from me and, and is loved and adored by everybody, not just her students, but by her colleagues. So I know I shouldn't, I'm sort of skimming into the other bit of the awards, but I just can't, I'm so bloody happy about her award. I, I can't tell you how delighted I am. Um, but it's because of people like Emma and it's because of teachers that we are able, as, as a sector, to allow people to come back and to learn throughout their lives. Um, 
I've said this in previous years and I'll say it again, is I would love in a world that this award never happens, that basically people don't have to return to learning because they've gone away from it, but they actually have learning throughout their lives and it doesn't stop at a period. But of course that isn't the case and for various reasons people's learning is interrupted and they can come back to it later. And, and adult learning is about those second, third, fourth chances at learning and celebrating the bravery, the commitment that people make to go back to a journey that they might not have enjoyed the first time around. So City Lit is incredibly proud to support this award and we're going to see this year's winner. My experience at school, it wasn't great. I suffered with depression and anxiety and I feel like my school didn't really help support me that much. And so because of my mental health, I just wasn't in the right place of mind to even just learn. I didn't pass my GCSEs at school. So obviously in order for me to get a job, I do need GCSEs and qualifications. Tyrese has been on a pathway of progression. She started with us on a non-accredited English class to get ready and develop the skills ready to move into accredited learning. Once Tyrese finished the community learning course, she moved on to functional skills level one English, progressed onto level two English, and also completed level one and level two maths functional skills. My experience with returning to learning has been very, very positive. I've enjoyed it. It's been way better than school. And everyone has been really nice and friendly. Tutors have been lovely. It is different in the case of I've been doing online courses. So I've been at home, I've been comfortable in my own space and things. Now it has been way better doing it this way. Tyrese has gained confidence. She's more outgoing than she was when she first started with us. She can now see that she's got qualifications and she's capable of moving into employment and has started to look at different career opportunities. My main reasons for returning to learning are mainly for my son's sake. So I just want to do better for them. I want to be able to support them in the best way that I can. She demonstrated how she can overcome her own anxieties or barriers and achieve. And I think that has a massive effect with other learners and groups that she's worked with. And because she's been so inspiring to us at adult learning, I think that has a ripple effect within adult learning because we see what learners can do. What a truly inspirational person. Tyrese, could you come down and join us? Thank you to Mark and congratulations to uh, Tyrese uh, there. Um, quick reminder to everybody, I'm seeing lots of tweets um, popping up, uh, but if you are on Twitter, please do make sure you use the hashtags on the screen behind me, FOL Awards and Festival of Learning 2023. Uh, we want to make sure we share all of these stories um, as widely as possible. 
And I think someone who's been keeping up with uh, Twitter has told me that uh, although there was no ministerial resignations yet, uh, correct at point of broadcast, um, that uh, Wimbledon has been disrupted by protesters. Again, I'm not taking the blame for that, but um, we're all in this room, so we, you know it's not our fault. Um, so there is, there is stuff going on as ever. Um, so please do tweet away about, about the awards. Not, you, tweet away about other things as well if you want, but tweet away about these awards. Um, right, so on to the next award, um, and this is all about some inspirational learning provision. And to introduce this award, uh, we have Half Merrifield, who is a uh, board member of the Learning and Work Institute and also director of strategy at the Open University, having had a range of roles across the university, um, local government, um, European government and national government uh, sectors as well. So we're really delighted to have Half to introduce this award. Thank you, Stephen. And uh, it's a great privilege to have the opportunity to talk to you about the winner of this award, who I'm delighted to say are Furcroft College. Furcroft is one of the only two adult residential colleges in England, and they provide a safe and welcoming environment for learners from the West Midlands, where offering wraparound support and care. The college engages with learners who are in the jargon, the furthest from the labour market and often have multiple and complex needs. Furcroft was founded in 1909 by George Cadbury Jr., one of the great Quaker philanthropists uh, of learning and education, who transformed his family home into a place of learning. The, the family have long-standing ties with Bourneville and wider Birmingham, giving the college a really strong social mission and historic connections to the local area. Furcroft offers a wide range of long, short and longer courses, including personal and social development, professional development courses for people in work and those seeking work, courses about community, social justice and functional skills. They're particularly known for providing that caring environment for people facing all sorts of multiple barriers to learning and to employment, including learning difficulties, mild disabilities or mental health conditions. And many of, many of those people feeling that personal or social skills are, are barriers to their success. Furcroft tackle this by giving those learners the confidence and freedom to express their opinions without judgment and also having the opportunity to discuss and learn from each other with the culture of peer-to-peer -peer learning. They have a very innovative approach and have developed several exciting projects, including the free thinking provision, which is a course specifically for people from new communities who've experienced extreme challenges such as modern slavery, trafficking or violence. So attending the college is helping those learners to reflect on their life and their possible next steps. So it's a great privilege to have had the opportunity to find out about Furcroft and particularly to be able to present this award to you this afternoon. So if our, if our representatives from Furcroft College could join me on the stage, we, we can uh, congratulate them on this well-deserved award. something to us about the way in which you do engage with those learners who are furthest from the learning, the, the labour market uh, and the impact it has for them. Sure, yeah. Um, firstly, thank you um, for the recognition in this award. Um, we're very pleased and, you know, we're a, an institute for adult learning like the palace of the city loop that we're in and like a number of the other um, uh, organisations that have been mentioned today. But we are very unique and I think you've said, you said quite a lot of it in your introduction because we're a residential adult education college. Um, with a really strong social justice mission that was um, we inherited from our founder, really, um, George Cabri. Um, and I don't think you did mention, but we do... The college is actually based in George's old family home. 
Um, so we have a beautiful set of buildings in six acres of grounds in the middle of Birmingham. And residency is such a huge important part of, of our students' experience. Um, and our students come from the most marginalised and minoritised um, communities in the region. And we work with adults when they are at a point of transition in their lives. So they are wanting to make some changes. Um, and many, many of our students are unemployed. Um, many come with long-term physical and mental health um, challenges. Um, and becoming into a residential environment, a residential learning environment, means that students, our students are able to leave behind sometimes very challenging home situations. Um, uh, for, some of them, for some of our students, that's just for a few nights. Uh, for others, they live with us for a whole year. Um, and from what happens in the classroom and our pedagogical practice, which is rooted in that kind of residential model, um, to the nourishing food that they eat, um, a lot of which is now produced from our own kind of grounds, um, our students tell us that Fircroft is a sanctuary and a safe haven. And most importantly, it's a wonderful place to learn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations to Fircroft uh, College on that award, and um, I think those institutes of adult education and also the, the residential learning that we were talking about there, um, these can be really important for adults for all the reasons that Mel was uh, talking about, and I think we, we underestimate that or underinvest in it at our peril, um, so we're really pleased to, to recognise uh, Fircroft College for, for that award as part of our Festival of Learning. Um, now, unbelievably, we've only got three awards left to go, and even more unbelievably, we're running on time, um, despite the fact that we couldn't afford a professional compare, and so you've been lumbered with me. Um, so so we're, we're doing all right so far, and some amazing stories, um, as I'm sure you'll all agree, and we've got three amazing stories left to go. Um, so the next award is a topic that's really close to our hearts here at the Learning and Work Institute. Um, and really critical for such a wide range of reasons, and that's the English Language uh, Learning Award. And to introduce that, we have the Deputy Chief Executive and Director of Policy and, and Research at the Learning and Work Institute. So please welcome Naomi Phillips. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Stephen. Um, and again, just so delighted and privileged to be able to give this um, award. We don't have a video, but I, um, I'm going to say um, a few words about the award winner's story. So, Fakra spoke no English when she moved to the UK in 2010. And she lacked the confidence to explore beyond her home environment. And when her husband died shortly after she gave birth to their third child, adult learning paved the way for her journey to independence. When Fakra started her ESOL course um, at Oldham College, at Oldham uh, Council's Lifelong Learning Service, she couldn't speak English. She didn't have the confidence to go shopping by herself or make appointments and had relied on her husband. And following his death, Fakra found herself in a low place that lasted for a long time, and she was looking after her three children alone. She started feeling better with treatment for depression, and was able to go back to her lifelong learning service and enrol on more courses. Fakra wanted to build her confidence and find a job so that she could support her children. English language learning has allowed Fakra to gain further qualifications, a job in social care money and new friends. She is confident speaking to her children's teachers and can also help other people in her community. 
Thakra's friends have watched her develop as a person and tell her they admire her achievements. She always tells them, if I can do it, anyone can do it, because I never thought I could do all of this. Thakra is right to feel proud of what she has achieved. I'm sure her husband would have been very proud of her too. Can I now welcome Fakra Irfan to the stage? What would you say to someone who should sign up uh, to an English language, to an ESOL course, but is feeling nervous about it? Uh, I would like to say it's uh, natural to feel nervous about trying something new, but uh, ESOL is, uh, you know, uh, ESOL is designed to help people to improve their uh, English language skills and uh, uh, build uh, confidence in speaking, listening, reading, and writing. When I started, I couldn't speak any English, but now I'm very confident speaking English. And, um, today I'm nervous as well, but <laughs> but I make it. I never thought I can go this far, but. I did it. I always, like you said that, I always said to other people, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Because I never thought I can do it, make this far. Thank you. You've done it. Well done. Thank you so much. Well, congratulations to Fakra, and as she was saying, and Naomi said as well, um, that's a great example of adult learning helping somebody achieve what they want to achieve, but also them helping and inspiring others as well. And that's the brilliant thing about this sector, is that that hope and that uh, possibility ripples on and ripples out from that initial course and that initial person as well. Um, so, on to our penultimate award, uh, which is all about new directions, uh, which is a big theme uh, for, for life and society and for the Festival of Learning. And we're really delighted this is sponsored by the Skills in Education group, who do so much great work to help so many people to change their lives through learning. And so I'm delighted to introduce that award to welcome to the stage the CEO of the Skills in Education group, Paul Eels. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an absolute delight. I am, skills and Education Group is a membership organisation for further education colleges and skills providers, and we have a mission which is about the advancement of skills and education to improve the lives of individuals. We do that through three things. We champion and support social mobility. We professionalise and support the development of the workforce in colleges and training providers, and we award qualifications across 16 different sectors. And this award, the New Directions Award, is about recognising that people in life change, they move on, they have life things happen to them and they find they're able to move forward through learning. And I'm delighted that Jason Richards has won this uh, year's award and we're going to run a short VT and find out more about him. was a struggle, brain damage, loss of memory, even forgot my own kids. I've lost so much memory that my brain wanted to fill in the empty gaps. The sitting guilt of a one two was all about, to put it simply, it was caretaker training. We were learning how to manage estates, clean, that kind of thing. The PA1 and PA6, they're basically to do with using pesticides for killing weeds, etc. The 
the biggest challenge is because my brain's a little bit slower. It's had some damage, it's taken some hits, so it's a little bit slower. It's been a bit of a challenge trying to keep up with everybody else. But definitely want to do some more learning. Definitely. You know, the more skills I've got, the better it is. I just keep plugging away. And I think I'm doing alright. The course is broken down into four sections. Jason would cover a particular unit on one day. They'd go through some coursework with my guidance, then they'd go through a test. And then during that week, they'd spend two days down in Elland with a mentor, putting all that theory into practice. When I was offered the contract by New Girl together, to be honest, it didn't sink in. It took well over a month to sink in that I'd actually got the job. Once my start date came through, that's when it all came, you know, it knocked me square between the eyes at that point. I realised then, you know, all that hard work had suddenly paid off. Jason has turned his life around through the training that he's been given. It's given him hope because he's got a job, he's got the money. He's then built up the confidence to re-engage with his family and his sons, and he's now got a partner. So all these things are actually starting from that learning journey that he's had. I'm sure you'll agree, a really worthy winner. Please welcome Jason to the stage. Describe how learning has changed your life and how you see your future now. Um, it's just giving me life back. It's not really changed, it's giving me life. I lost it, now bring it back. Brilliant. Thanks to a great bunch of people, basically. Brilliant. And our future? I may get to see that unfold. I don't really know where that's going yet. I think that's the best bit about it. I don't know where it's going, it's time to build it. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Well, congratulations um, there. Uh, I, I think that's kind of the epitome of um, the difference that adult learning can make about um, giving, I think the words were sort of giving him his life back and um, not sure where, where things will lead to, but know they're leading somewhere. And that's kind of what it's all, that, that's the epitome of new directions actually, isn't it? As well as adult education more broadly. Um, and now, so we've come to the last award of the afternoon. Um, these lights are very bright. I think you're all still there and with me. This is good. Um, and we've given you nine really inspirational stories so far, and we've got one to go. So this is the uh, President's Award, which is chosen by the President of the Learning and Work Institute. And so to introduce that and to hand over the award, I'm really pleased to welcome the Learning and Work Institute President, Maggie Galliers. Thank you, Stephen, and good afternoon, everyone. 
This is my first year as president at the Learning and Work Institute, and although I feel very honoured to have been elected into this role, there are some parts of it that are more demanding than others, and they include the hugely challenging task of selecting the President's Award winner. As you'll know from seeing the other presentations today, we receive an abundance of nominations, almost all of which are worthy of an award, and choosing between them is not an easy ask. And so I'd like to add my congratulations to all our um, award entrants, winners, and finalists today. The President's Award recognises learning provision that stands out because it does something truly remarkable. To select from such an array of impactful projects was difficult, as I said, but there was one which really impressed me for demonstrating what a difference adult learning can make. The St Giles Trust began as a homelessness shelter in Southwark in 1962. Decades of experience have therefore fed into St Giles Trust's groundbreaking model of using adult learning to turn a past into a future. The innovative St Giles um, London Peer Hub trains and supports its clients to achieve a level three NVQ in advice and guidance, often the first qualification that they have ever attained. Using their own lived experience of poverty, crime, homelessness, imprisonment and addiction as a resource, they add to this their newly acquired advice and guidance skills to help others who face situations which they themselves have faced. Not only does this improve the life chances of those they advise, but it also increases the employment opportunities for the trainees with over half of those training in the last three years going on to a sustainable um, uh, situation in terms of employment. So, St Giles Trust, a very worthy winner. Please join me on the stage. Congratulations, it's wonderful to meet you. I'd be really interested to know what you think is so special about what you do and what makes it so successful. I think what we do is we give uh, people from the local community, we give them uh, knowledge, uh, we give them professional skills, uh, network and support so that they can help other people who are in the same situations as them in the past and use their lived experience to help the person sitting in front of them. Well, thank you so much. Is anybody else going to say something? Or are you going to let him say it all? Right, OK. Um, right, right close. Come okay. in here. Yeah, sure. Um, so what stands out is you did mention lived experience. And um, I think what stands out is having to, to, um, to train people with that lived experience. And that lived experience can sometimes be a barrier. So it's uh, the fact that we can... Uh, we have these learners from a wide range of background talking about homelessness, uh, uh, unemployment, uh, mental health issues, people who've been through the criminal justice systems, and being able to work with other projects within the organization in order to adapt to the needs of, uh, of these learners, and then being able to provide an accessible and uh, an inclusive environment for them. Well, thank you so much. I think we can all see why it's such a success. So.
Well, thank you, Maggie, and congratulations to the St Giles Trust. I think I'm right in saying that the St Giles Trust won a Mayor of London Adult Learning Award uh, last year, um, and we, we, we helped to support the Mayor of London in those awards, um, and that kind of linked on then to the Festival of Learning. So this enables me to make a handy plug, which is that the Mayor of London Adult Learning Awards are open for nominations now. So if you've got a taste for awards after today, or you know someone who you think would be an amazing uh, nominee or a potential winner, please do um, put them forward, um, and maybe we can kind of... Um, do you know what? I don't know how we do that, Emily. How do people nominate? Online, thank you. Do you know what? That, that's, that's not the most specific bit of help I've ever given anyone. Um, can you tell I don't do this for a living? Um, so uh, I think if you Google it, it'll come up. Let's go with that. Um, but um, um, So we're really pleased to work with the Mayor of London on those awards. And the nominations for next year's Festival of Learning Awards will open in November. Again, online. Um, so further details will follow on that. Um, I did want to just say um, a couple of things, a couple of thank yous first. So firstly, congratulations to all of those award winners who are really inspirational. A huge thanks to our British Sign Language interpreters um, and all of our uh, sponsors and supporters as well, to City Lit, to the Education and Training Foundation, to NOCN, to Phoenix Insights and to the Skills and Education Group. Um, and to everybody who's attended today, both um, online, via YouTube, and um, here in the room as well. Um, now, in a moment, there's a drinks reception in the cafe and art gallery outside, though I would ask if all of the award winners could please stay in here first for some group photos. Um, I promise that we will save you some drinks and cake, so don't worry. I may have overpromised. There is cake, I think, isn't there? I don't want to overpromise. Um, so please do stay behind if you're an award winner so we can take a group photo. And everybody else, please do in a second go and enjoy the reception. I just wanted to say one last thing, um, which is about the bigger picture of adult learning and how the Festival of Learning fits together. And to ask for all of you to help us to continue to advocate for adult education. Uh, we, we live in a world of constant change and increasing complexity and longer working lives and, and so much going on. And adult education and lifelong learning has never been more important. And yet, um, government investment in England is a billion pounds lower than it was in 2010. And employers are spending 28% less on training per employee than they were in 2005. So the need is up, the investment is down. But we can do better than this, and everybody in this room is an example of the power of lifelong learning and adult education, and we can all make a difference. So I hope that you'll all join with us in making sure that lifelong learning is an issue in the upcoming general election and all the local elections that will be taking place as well. Um, if you're an employer, and I'll include the Learning and Work Institute in this, think about how we can invest more in training. If you're an employee, think about how you can talk to your employer about investing more. And of course, we can all be the change that we want to see in our communities. We've heard so much about how all of you are inspiring more adults to learn. How can we do more of that? And think about how we can make this the lifelong learning century. So please do go and inspire more adults to learn. Um, please do share the inspiring stories of our winners today. Please do enjoy the reception outside first. Um, and in the meantime, can we have one more round of applause for our fabulous winners? Thank you very much. And my last request for a round of applause is to the amazing um, Learning and Work Institute team and all of the team that have worked to put today together and to run today and to get the videos to work and all of those sorts of things. So a big thank you to everyone who's worked so hard on that. Thank you and enjoy the reception.